Welcome back to another edition of Recruiter Fuel. My name is Steve Lois. I am your host, as I am every single Thursday. Right now, you should be enjoying the series that we have with Joan Moorhead, more of an HR talent optimization guru. For my own sanity, I put together this model that said, what are the key phases of HR? Starting with the- From the very, employee life cycle, so to speak? From the employee, and, and I don't look at it as a life cycle, I okay. look at it as a continuum, because to me, life cycle assumes death cycle. And after this, we'll see a series with Bill Kiefer, who's actually a, a veteran, who has moved into helping companies recruit veterans and why there's a disconnect. I uh, started out my career in the military. I was a logistics officer in the Army. So you saw some stuff that we just don't even get a chance to see on TV. Correct. Yeah, okay. I came to the HR world because I had an HR degree. Well, we've got a completely different topic today. Scott, Hannah, thank you for joining me. So I gotta make one, I've gotta stay one thing here. Okay. I'm wearing a suit. I wouldn't be wearing a suit given today's topic, but I was supposed to go see somebody and unfortunately that got canceled. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we'd be a little bit more casual. Right. And it's uh, it's kind of a joking topic is the way I'm starting it, but it's really not a joking topic. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna put a picture up that you guys have seen that I want everybody else to be able to see. And I, it's kind of to get what kind, what, see what kind of reaction we get out of people. So this is the picture that you guys have seen. For everybody else, here's the picture. And basically it says, can't find a job, blames the government. Now, this is not to be a political conversation, but it's to be a conversation around, you know, does this matter when we're hiring? We're in the recruiting space. Companies are hiring all the time and they have to look at people like this. Is there a point, and let me ask both of you this and feel free to jump in here, Scott or Hannah. Is there a point where it's too much? Yes. Why do you say that, Hannah? But now let's, let's be fair though Okay. Here. You've got a nose ring. Mm -hmm. You have your septum pierced. I you do. just mentioned I that, do. which I did not know. <laughs> know. <laughs> You're and I've seen the tattoos. Yeah, I've You're got like a lot. covered. Yeah, I've got a lot. Right, mm -hmm. Scott. No piercing. No nothing. No tattoo. Nope. No. No nothing. flavor. No flavor. Oh, wow, no. Yeah, I guess none at all. <laughs> no, not for me. So now. It looks like I, you know, wearing a suit and all that. I have, a, I have a number of tattoos as well. I can't say my wife appreciates it, but, you know, so it's shocking for some people. But no, seriously, you know, you see something like this. Again, is, is, there, is there a point, Scott, where it becomes too much? To, agree, to simply agree with Hannah, yeah, there is. You know, we were talking you know, before we went on about, you know, over the years, I think companies have become a little bit more relaxed in terms of certainly their, their dress code which then, then tends to the attire that maybe you wear even to an interview. Um, I've seen more in, in my years, both as a corporate recruiter and as a client rec facing recruiter, I've seen more um, leeway relative to piercings and tattoos. But you know, I, I think when you're um, getting into drastically changing your appearance or your entire face is for the most part is covered in tattoos, you have to understand that there are probably going to be a lot of employers out there based on the roles they're hiring for that they're not going to consider you for some of the positions that they have. But is that right, Hannah? I mean, let's let's say, and I don't know this guy. It's not fair to pick this guy out. It's just, it's, right. a, it's a meme, so to speak, that's sure. all over Facebook. I've seen it on LinkedIn. Yeah. It's been talked about for years and years and mm -hmm. years. In fact, it's the same picture. I mean, this guy, let's say he's a, a developer. He could be freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. Is it fair to look at somebody and say, they look funny, I don't want to hire them? It's, a, it's an interesting topic. It is. I don't think it's fair. And I am the person who, I think I was one of the first people who saw that picture and was like, I'd hire him, but not for every role, but for a lot of roles. But um, I even myself would be like customer facing roles. I'd be a little unsure, but who's to really say? I think a lot of it is just built around social constructs. I'm okay seeing that person deliver pizza or, you know, take my blood or whatever profession he might be. But Are you I saying know, he's a vampire? No, I mean, in terms of, you know, he worked out, he was a phlebotomist or whatever. But I know if he, if my grandma ordered a pizza and that guy showed up, she wouldn't accept the pizza. She would be terrified. Yeah. And so it, it's it's a balance, I, I think. Have, have either one of, in the years that you guys have been recruiting, have either one of you had an experience where, because not in every situation can you see the candidate before they go in sure. to see the client. And we try to video as much as we poss as possible mm -hmm. around here. But have you ever had a situation where the candidate showed up at the client site and the client calls you afterwards going, oh my gosh. I think we get them more relative to just dress code. Okay. 
you know, hey, we the person showed up in a t-shirt and jeans and everybody interviewing them is in suits. Um, yeah. So I haven't got as much of that. Maybe 10 years ago, it would have been much more likely for someone, oh, and they had like a spike in their ear or their yeah. eyebrows were pierced yeah. or they had, a, they had a teardrop tattoo near their eye. When I did a good bit of corporate recruiting and we recruited for roles all the way from minimum wage up to senior executives, I always tried to remind some of the interviewers, keep in mind the positions you're hiring these people for and the needs that you have. So don't immediately just disqualify someone based on appearance. Um, have the, take the time to talk to them. And that could be physical appearance. That could be how they were dressed. That could really be anything. Um, you know, 10 years ago, the, the propensity of facial hair on, on male candidates is, was nothing like it is now. We, we had a client at one particular time, and you know who the client is. It's a financial institution. And, yeah. and there was a policy of no facial hair. Mm -hmm. Now, two problems that, that that caused. One, I've had a goatee for <laughs> decades, mm -hmm. right? A little darker today than it usually is, but uh, you know I've had so that was one kind of right. issue because I stuck out like a sore thumb. Then they were hiring a head of HR for one of their regions, and the individual that we placed had a beard, yeah. and they had to, had had to have an exception because of the fact he had a beard, and he said he'll walk away if they make him shave the beard off. He's still there today, but it's to your point, it's yeah. it's it's, it's kind of changed. Yeah. But Hannah, you said something a little bit ago, you know maybe you don't put them in front of a, in a customer facing mm -hmm. position. And if, if you were having this conversation with him or somebody mm -hmm. else that looked like that, and they say, that's not fair. How do you, cause I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I happen to agree with you. I think there's a, there's a point where you have to question, is that the best representation of your company? So right. think about it from a, a company owner's perspective mm -hmm. or a leader within a company or so forth. But then the candidate says that's discriminatory. Mm -hmm. Could they make a case legally? I don't know, maybe. But is that fair? What would you say to a candidate like that? Tough question, I know. Yeah, I, I, if I was in his shoes, I would just want someone to be honest with me. And so I would just give him the honest truth and be like, I've been in this a while. I, I know what people like. And unfortunately, I, I know it's really tough and I'm not judging you on this, but there are some, I guess, standards or norms out there of types of appearances and um, you're on the extreme side. And I'm sure you know that, but my, I would assume. I can't imagine they don't know that. Right. And, and my assumption, and it is an assumption, is that if someone's going to that level to take those extremes, they know the doors that they're closing when they do that. And, and, and I guess that's my point in this, right? So people have the right to choose to do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. You're not going to tell them not to do it. I mean, if, if it's your kid, maybe, but, but you can't really make decisions for other people, right? We all, we mm -hmm. all know that. But when you make a decision like that, there are consequences of every decision. Mm -hmm. So to make the decision and then be upset with the consequences, I'm not so sure that he has a, if, if in fact, now that, again, this is a meme, if in fact he's got a situation where now he doesn't feel he's employable, is it the employer's fault or is it his own fault given the fact that there are consequences with every decision we make? Again, to Hannah's point, I think it just goes back to the, the avenues that the individual is pursuing relative to employment. Yeah. This might sound bad to some, but... Unless it's your own company, you're not going to be CEO of a business if you have, you know, that much ink all over your face and holes Probably. everywhere. Now, there are lots of small business owners that would look more outside of the standards and norms that people are used to, but it's their own company. And they then give the opportunity to afford that leeway to other people. I like my tattoos. I'll hire people who have a lot of tattoos. Um, I'm open to people with my employees having piercings. They, you know, they may do more of that as well. So that doesn't mean that every door is closed for a person who yeah, does that. Agreed, agreed. But when you're radically changing your appearance or modifying your natural appearance, um, in some cases through artificial means, I think Hannah's exactly right. You, you've you've self-selected yourself out of a lot of jobs. Yeah, and from an employer's perspective, from an entrepreneur's perspective, I, I align with that. So, mm -hmm. you know, 20 years ago when we started the business, we weren't, you weren't wearing jeans. <laughs> No. You weren't right. showing off your tattoos. Sure. You know, you didn't have the piercing. In no. fact, I made people take it out. Oh, okay. 20 years ago. Yeah. 15 years ago. That's such a minor thing. Now, my daughter has a mm -hmm. ear or nose piercing. For me, it's a deal breaker. If a company would ask me to take these out, yeah, it would be a deal breaker. And, and you know what? 15 years ago, you probably... So uh, we evolved too because social norms happen to evolve, right? Mm -hmm. But there is a point where, you know, I do think there's an extreme that I'm not going to put 
this person, even though he's probably very qualified, and I know it may not be the right answer, but it's the answer that I have is I'm not going to put him in front of my customers right mm -hmm. now. Right. That is our prerogative. I think it's going to be interesting. And, and I'm curious to any of the recruiters that are watching this, you know, you're probably going to fall on one side or the other of this. It'd be great to continue the conversation because I don't think people are willing to talk about it. And I mean, this is kind of a taboo subject right now, especially mm -hmm. politically. It's a pretty mm -hmm. politically charged subject because we want to be fair to everybody, but we also have to have a certain amount of decorum if you want to call it when you're in business as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's unfortunate that he's, this guy could be like really, really talented mm -hmm. and he's probably getting limited as, as a result of what he looks like, unfortunately. It's all about the choices you make. And to me, when you make those choices, you're just placing your physical appearance over your career path. Because for me- That's a good point. For me, personally, I would love to have a lot more tattoos and visible piercings, purple hair, shaved hair. I know that for the career I want, that's not really acceptable. So I have decided I would, this is the choice I'm making is to abstain on some of the things that I'd like to do physically because my career is more important. Sure. Again, consequence choice. Mm -hmm. Scott, any kind of last words on, on this whole thing? And by the way, you could have wore your hoodie today <laughs> because we are pretty casual on certain days around yes, here. But I, but yes, I appreciate you wearing the, the buttoned up shirt No problem. Today. No problem. <laughs> no, I think when you make the conscious choice, I have a family member, piercings all, you know, all across the face, um, lots of tattoos, sleeves on both arms. I've had the discussion with her and she said, um, yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with it. It's what I want. And if people don't want to hire me, that's, you know, because of it, that's their decision. Yeah. Um, you know, I hope as she gets older and she's probably early to mid career right now, I hope as she gets older, she doesn't realize that a lot of people don't want to hire her, but she, you know, she does have the choice of removing some of those piercings or covering up those tattoos at times. So, so you've seen the voice and I've used this analogy before, mm -hmm. you know yes. what the voice oh, is, yeah. right? Oh yeah. So what's the whole point of the voice? Just to solely pick someone based off of their musicality. Yeah, after because looks. so if if you were if one of the mm -hmm. two or both of you were singing, my back would be to you right mm -hmm. now. So the only thing I hear is the talent you do or do not have, irregardless of what you look like, right. what gender you are, it doesn't really make a difference, right? So this guy could be a freaking awesome singer, right? And, and if he was picked for his talent, that's one thing. So there is so there is a case to yeah. say. If there's a capability issue, so I struggle with that. Mm -hmm. But as a as an employer myself, I'd look at that and say, again, I'm not going in front of a customer. But right. you know, I, I think it's a hot topic, and I think it'll continue to evolve because the norms mm -hmm. continue to evolve. I mean, my son has a sleeve. Mm -hmm. Just think of how great his mother thinks about, or how thrilled she is <laughs> about that particular one, right? Sure. To me, it's not a big deal because I've had them for years. My daughter's got two or three of them. Her husband has a ton of them as well. He's a cop. I mean, he just can't show them. You know, that's that's right. the only thing. So everybody's got kind of a different threshold for what it is. But thank you guys for your your input on this. My guess is that half of you that are watching this are kind of squirming, going, "That's not fair to the individual," and and you have that right. And the other half of you are saying, "Yeah, I wouldn't hire that person either either way." It, this is a tough one. And if you've got some comments on it, comment below. Shoot me an email. Put it out on Twitter. I don't. Let's get the conversation going instead of considering this topic as taboo as, as it is right now. I mean, that's the whole point of Recruiter Fuel. Let's talk about some stuff that actually matters that people aren't willing to have a conversation about and give some honest feedback to people. I think that's the important piece of this. So mm -hmm. thank you guys again for joining. Make sure you come back. We'll see you one week from today.